Hi there, and this is Who Ha Sports Today, your daily sports update and review show covering all that's happening in your world of football and beyond. Today, we will transfer the heat from Fernando Torres and his horrible blunder at the weekend to one club who have fallen from grace, Arsenal. But we begin with tonight's Olympic qualifier between Malaysia and Asian giants Japan in Fukuoka. The national squad will have an uphill battle after progressing to the final group stage qualifications. Besides Japan, our young Tigers are grouped together with Bahrain and Syria. The other two groups consist of Korea, Oman, Qatar and Saudi Arabia in Group A, while Australia, Iraq, the United Arab Emirates and Uzbekistan are in Group B. But all eyes will be on our Malaysian boys after the so-called senior team was booted out of the 2014 World Cup qualifiers by Singapore in July. Of course, we all, old enough to remember, will look back at the last time we qualified to the Olympics, back in 1972, when I was just about one. The euphoria was short-lived when the draw was revealed and our opponents back then. We were in Group A along with world giants West Germany, Morocco and the United States. We only managed one win and let in nine goals. Technically, we also did qualify for the 1980 Olympics in Moscow, but due to the boycott initiated by the Alliance, we gave it a skip. So, what can we expect from our boys? Beating Japan is definitely a big ask. But as long as our boys can display a spirited performance, there's not much more that we can demand of them. And playing against seasoned campaigners such as Bahrain and Syria, in all honesty, the experience will be invaluable for our young boys. So, good luck and selamat maju jaya Malaysia. Time to head back to the Premier League and as mentioned yesterday, it's looking to be a topsy-turvy season. Probably the one team that we all are surprised by is Arsenal. And after their 3-4 loss to Blackburn on the weekend, fans have suddenly seemed to have enough of Arsene Wenger. Hey guys, Blackburn 4, Arsenal 3. Blackburn 4. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm furious about this result because of how it's happened, you know. How can we be losing to Blackburn for free? That, that's that's just ridiculous, you know. Uh, it's just not right. Uh, oh. Good. Ah. Music. Okay, maybe just maybe we can score, but no, 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 no. <sighs> Must also make a run through the right, the right. Juru missed out his tackle, you know. Also gets right past him. He just there, there is nobody, and I mean nobody in the box for Blackburn at this point. And he crosses it anyway, and it still goes in. You can view his complete rants and views, just search for Franatomy on YouTube. On Arsenal's official Facebook page, the comments are as varied as how they have conceded goals this season. One of which I picked is Kimit Kimawi, who asks why Marwan Shamang didn't start against Blackburn, which I agree. And there's this one from Tang Tran Chi, who suggests maybe it's time the Gunners look to the future without Arsene Wenger. But say what you want, the Arsenal board have given Wenger its full support. In an article in The Guardian written by Paul Doyle, according to Arsenal's chief executive Ivan Gazidis, it will be wrong to dismiss Wenger. He said removing Wenger is not at all on the cards and they do have the funds available even during the summer but will use it when the January transfer window opens. He added that they won't spend just because they are facing some short-term pressure. So Arsenal fans, looks like you will have to bear with the professor for now. But hey, you did, did notch a come-from-behind win over Shrewsbury in the Carling Cup this morning by three goals to one. By the way, Shrewsbury are in League 2 competition. That's the fourth division of the English League. Okay, tomorrow we'll bring you an update of the Championship, that's Division 2, where Brighton have suffered their first defeat of the season. Till then, from the team and I, it's bye for now.